All right, on tonight's episode of Python Poppy, I'm pretty sure for those of you who read the titles of these actual videos, you know what time it is already. We're back inside our Super Mario Brothers project. And uh, first and foremost, let me go ahead and issue an apology to myself for uh, trying to give up way too early on a situation that we were in. So yeah, after I told you that I was going to give up on a situation, I tried about 50 more times. And we made a little more progress. So enough talking. Let's get back to what we were doing earlier. And if you do notice that we aren't doing a tensor flow course at all today, we're going to double up tomorrow. That's because I just couldn't let this sit with this whole uh, Super Mario Brothers project thing going on. I had to dive in and we just dedicated all day to this. Maybe that's what I'll start doing more often. I'll I'll start expanding the uh, the training sessions that I'm doing. Well, it's not really a training session. I'll start expanding the uh, coding sessions that I implement. Right now, I'm capping myself at about three hours between both courses. I'm thinking I maybe need to expand that because I need to dive a little bit deeper, the deeper and further I go. But yeah, with that being said, let's uh, get back to the problem at hand. We'll touch more bases on that tomorrow when we actually go back into our tensor flow course. But like I said, we're focused on the Super Mario Brothers. So let's dive in. So first and foremost, let's get and uh, start running these cells here so we can get everything implemented and get everything brought over so I can start explaining to you exactly what's going on. So if you recall yesterday, I told you that we were having an issue with the uh, second part of the code and the first part of the code was working just fine when we were using the same exact thing as joypad. Let me show you because this is the first half of the code. We we're using this joypad space here and it was saying that it was uh, trying to take an argument that was in uh, that about our second phase of code. And I did show you that we have it here in our code and we have a reset. This is the second part of the problem. We have both here in the first half of our code and everything worked fine. And then I started looking a little bit deeper, and I did realize that for the second half of our code, we're going to be implementing a second environment. So with that being said, let me finish uh, moving through the steps. So we can implement our grayscale. I did get that. So we're going to uh, skip a few steps. We're going to skip these three, and I'll explain that to you in a second why we're skipping them. So this is everything right here. So first and foremost, this is our regular image here. You can see this is the shape of our image, 240 by 256 by 3. So this is the one here we'll be doing. This will give us six, 61,440 pixels that our model would have to train on and have to learn through. And this is what that image would look like. So as you can see, it is a regular colored image from our from the uh, environment. Now, in order to get the, a black and white or a grayscaled version from the matplotlib, what we would do is we would come back to this cell. We would, we would activate this cell here, let them know that we want to grayscale our environment. We will go ahead and uh, reset the environment so we can pick up the new information. And then we would run the shape again so we can see exactly if it's picking it up or not. If you can see now, we have a shape of 240 by 256 by 1. I apologize. 1 was supposed to be first. That would be the 61,404 pixels. 3 would have been the uh, 184,000, I believe. Let me run that for you. So that's, like I said, the training on our model that makes a big difference so if we wanted to train our model on playing an actual game and i have to go through and not have to cut through a bunch of fluff and other things that don't really pertain to gameplay like coloring and things like that and textures and things like that grayscale it would only have to deal with 61,000 pixels but if we tried to train our model in a game and leave all of the coloring in and all of the extras we'd be training on 184,000 pixels plus everything else the model would have to learn about the game so it'll be a lot more strenuous task for our model. That's why we're actually dropping it down to the grayscale version. And I showed you how we implemented it. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like now. We actually saved it. We ran it. We reset the stage. And this is a matplotlib's grayscale version or black and white version of an image. You can see there's a big difference here. Now, that's all good and well. That works fine. But you see, we noticed we left these two blank. We didn't initiate them. And let me show you why. So let's go back and start from the top. We don't have to do any imports or any pip installs. Once that stuff is done inside this environment, it's done. We can just move forward and uh, start running, rerunning cells. So let's bring it from here. We'll start from here. We'll do this one. Now notice, watch what happens. See, grayscale is even. Let's just start from the top all the way together just to make sure everything goes through. So we're going to do this one first. That should go through good. That should go through good. This should go through good. This should go through good. Now, let, watch, watch what happens when we get to the reset. The reset went through good. The shape went through good. 
Hmm. Everything's going through all of a sudden. That's crazy. It wasn't just working. Well, what do you know? Now, this is the first time it went all the way through like this. Oh, that's why I went through. Duh. I didn't initiate the cells here. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long day. Excuse me. So let's go from the top. Uh, yeah, I really thought I did something right there. Let's go back to the top and re uh, reinitialize these all day. I've run this a million times, so it's all starting to blur into one long code. So let's do this. And now you're going to see what happens when we try to run this. Uh, let's initialize this. Let's initialize this. And now let's see what happens when we try to run the reset. So that's the issue we were having all day yesterday, and that's the issue we're still having today. The only reason that it stopped it, and I did break it down, that's the reason why I like the Google Colab, like I said, because we can break down every cell and see exactly what's thrown the error. So without having it done like this, I would have never known exactly where the error was being thrown. I knew it was somewhere around here, and I knew what it was, but I don't know exactly why. Now looking at it like this, I can see, and I tried all of the cells separately, so I did realize that these two cells aren't playing good together. The Joypad Space cell... And it's a dummy vac cell. As you can see here, this dummy vac cell has an environment. And the reason why we have both of them blank is because it's a separate environment. Now, the reason that we're having an issue is because this dummy vac and this vac frame are two separate environments that we use reinforcement learning in. So this is where we have to train our model with our reinforcement learning codes or reinforcement learning uh, stipulations that we give our model. And then we actually pass our game environment into that environment. And that's what the issue is being thrown. So... The E and V environment, let me show you what this is saying about the seed. So you see here the seed argument. So the E and V environment or the joypad doesn't take a seed. That's why it's throwing the error. This environment doesn't take a seed. But when we pass it into this dummy back environment where we have our reinforcement learning tools that we're going to train our model on, this one does take a seed. So for some reason, the seed from this one is being passed on to this one, which is throwing the error. So that's why it looks like it's not working when it's just these two lines all playing together. So in essence, this is one environment and this is one environment, but they're both named E and V. And we're trying to pass them and we're trying to distinguish them at the same time. And it's throwing the error. So I think I have a workaround. I'm not going to get into it tonight. Like I said, it's been all day I've been working at this. But I finally figured it out and pinpointed exactly where it is and exactly what's going on and exactly what it's doing. Like I should have done from the jump instead of trying to give up too prematurely. But yeah, like I said, I do apologize for that. And we're back on track better than ever. So like I said, now we know that these two environments are not playing well together. Because like I said, they both want to be environment. They both want to be environment, name the same environment, but they want to be separate. So we can't have that. We got to find a way to distinguish them two and still have them play together nicely. So that's our issue. Everything's working fine. We just have two environments. One has a seed argument. One doesn't have a seed argument. But when we put this environment inside of this environment to train our game on a, a, with our reinforcement learning tools, this environment is picking up this parameter of C from this one, which is throwing the error. So that's what we have to do. We just have to figure out how we can make these two lines of code work together and we can move forward. And of course, I will keep you posted every step of the way. And for now, this is the Python Poppy. You guys stay Gucci.